Battletech Operational Turning Points Falcon Incursion by Catalyst Games Read by Shrapnel Reeling from their war with Clan Wolf, the Crusaders of Clan Jade Falcon were spoiling for action against a worthy foe. Khan Martha Pride seized the opportunity to test both her fledgling warriors and the strength of the newly formed Liren Alliance. The Falcon march to Coventry would bear a fruit that no one could have anticipated, ultimately setting the stage for the end of the clan invasion itself. Coventry Military Academy Campus, Coventry, Liren Alliance, 15 March 3058. Watch your heat, Marsh. You can't pound crap if your engine shut down and your ammo explodes. Cadet William Marsh pushed the voice of his instructor out of his head. Beads of sweat poured down his face and body, the cooling vest he inherited from his father years ago being woefully inadequate for accepting the heat his blackjack was producing at an alarming rate. He imagined the pilot the vixen he was fighting had no such worries, much to his dismay. They circled around each other amongst the benches and gardens of the academy's quad, Marsh trying to keep the distance static and his opponent from trying to get into his rear. Both sides were trying to soften the other with near misses and wide shots. An occasional hit would score, telling Marsh this Falcon was just as young and inexperienced as he was. His instructor barked in his head again. Marsh, get closer to your target. Clans have better weapons at longer range. You can't win a fight against them unless you're getting close for your missiles. It took a moment to realise the voice was real. His instructor was howling over the comm. Good at Marsh. Acknowledge. Yes, sir. Moving in. Marsh grunted back. No matter how much he wanted to actually verbally berate his instructor, he instinctively knew it was a bad idea. If both of them survived this battle, he would get a thrashing more brutal than when he pulled that simulator prank on his classmate during the first year. Fighting the heat-induced sluggishness, Marsh hesitantly pushed his machine forward as fast as he could, knocking aside several empty tables adorned with abandoned meal sacks and beverages from a nearby cafe. The Jade Falcons had landed outside the academy mere hours ago and were still securing landing zones. All the cadets were in attendance this week, an oversized class thanks to the recent Liren recruitment push. Nobody knew they had nearly a third more soldiers than usual. Success against the invaders was surely possible, especially with cadet junior William Marsh in the fight. So he liked to think, anyway. If we do succeed, the price will be high, he thought grimly. The clan technological advantage was huge widened by the fact that many of the cadets were piloting ancient, passed down designs or first generation upgrades that were more slap on field refits from a technician's insane asylum. Marsh's BJ2 Blackjack was one of the more thoughtful ones and he was able to finagle getting assigned to it when the Falcons appeared. Well, I am one of the top pilots in my class, he smirked. Marsh also netted a Lance XO slot one that turned into a command position when Lieutenant Instructor White was taken out by a clanner's PPC blast to the cockpit in the first minute of contact. Marsh was hoping for numbers, sheer tenacity and bravado would carry the day for Coventry. Well, all that and a miracle. As if sensing the sudden intention for a close-in fight, the vixen obliged, turning away from the endless circling and heading straight at him. At first, the smaller mech looked as if it were going to charge, but as it closed, it became apparent the pilot was trying to dash past him. He turned to follow the machine as it pounded by and fought to keep the blackjack upright against the vixen's barrage of laser and machine gun fire. Luckily, Marsh held the target reticule just long enough for his streak missiles to squeal their lock and mash the firing stud, adding his lasers to the barrage. He prayed to the Lord for everything to hit and knock the clan machine down. His prayers were answered. The lasers pounded into the vixen's back, stripping the armor, tearing through its internal structure. The missiles followed, flaying the now exposed backside. The clan mech shook violently and fell face first, skidding into the ground and ripping its right arm out of its socket. The vixen slammed into one of the quad's marble historical markers, cracking it in half. 
Marsh let out a loud whoop, too late realising his comm was still broadcasting. He didn't care, the victory cry would help offset the constant stream of calls for help and panic from his classmates since the fighting commenced. Dixon down. Jeremy, you hold me a beer. His landsmate retorted quickly. I'll deduct it from the two you owe me, Willie. Silently cursing Jeremy for using that name, he stumped as a blackjack closer to the fallen prey, admiring his handiwork. Good work, Marsh. Echoed the voice of his instructor. Was that a hint of pride in his voice? Now cut out the chit chat and move on to the next target before they jump on you. Acknowledging the order, Marsh started to turn back to the front line when he suddenly thought he saw the clan mech shift. Or was it just the chassis settling on the ground? Marsh yelped as the vixen began to heave itself upwards from the ripped earth. Backing up, he reflexively gripped his firing triggers, emptying all of his weapons into the backside of the vixen and slapping down on the shutdown override. The blistering heat dumping into the cockpit seared his skin for several seconds. The weapons at such short range on a stationary target near guaranteed success. He swore he could see the ground through the holes he just put into it. The vixen disappeared in a ball of plasma fire as its engine lost containment. The soft wave of heat that washed over the blackjack threatened to again shut down the mech. Marsh, I said move on. Marsh grumbled shakily, unappreciative ass. Looking out into the distance, he spotted the Hauptmann instructor's blue and red crusader backpedalling in a duel with a much smaller Ulla near the Marston Library. The Ulla's missile racks vomiting near three dozen missiles streaking out to slam into his instructor's machine. The crusader took a firm step back under the barrage of missiles, bending slightly as it stood its ground. Then, replied with a violent barrage of its own missiles and lasers. The Ulla shuddered for a moment before turning to seek cover, an arm hanging only by a couple of pieces of bent structure and Myama bundles. Man, those reports were right. He's over twice the size of that clan machine and it still has the same firepower. Unreal! Evidently their instructor was shaken up from the exchange as well, at least enough to decide to run. Withdraw east to rendezvous Point Vega. Our position is compromised. Still flush with success, Marsh protested. Sir, we can hold this ground. We're beating them back. The Hauptmann instructor refused to be swayed. Orders from the old man, Cadet Marsh. No arguments. Suddenly, Marsh's proximity alarm went off. He stomped on the floor pedals, activating the Blackjack's jump jets as a flight of missiles corkscrewed past his cockpit. Twisting his torso to the side, he noted a dasher speeding behind him before he could bring his weapons to bear. Shit, they are behind us too. Echolan, fast mover behind me. Marsh cried. He glanced down at a secondary monitor, hastily scanning the academy map projected there. Follow me. Walking backwards instead of jumping into the air again, Marsh hoped the move would steady his aim. He could feel the adrenaline pumping through his veins, giving his hands a slight jitter. Only half of his missiles were able to get a target lock and launch. His lasers went wide. The missiles peppered the dasher's side, shredding armor plating and punching holes into the torso. The clanner kept up its sprint, looking for cover behind the nearby military science building. Or was it the administration building? Marsh could not tell the difference at that moment as alarms squealed around him. Take him down now and we might be able to withdraw safely. His intended order for Jeremy and Rogers to concentrate fire on the flanking clanner was overruled before it was even voiced as the instructor's voice interrupted with a mix of anger and panic. Marsh, pull back, damn you. What are you doing? I said pull back. That's what I'm doing, sir. These damn clanners are all around us. He glanced down again at his secondary monitors, rechecking his indicators. The cockpit was stifling and he smelled the tart stink of burning circuitry. How did they push so far east so suddenly? Jeremy's chameleon was suddenly behind him and in the blackjack's rear visor strip, Marsh could see only a few clan mechs in pursuit. A flight of missiles ripped overhead, well over the cadets' heads. 
covering Jeremy's back was Roger's limping commando, launching missiles at anything getting close to them. Ahead of them, Marsh could see more clan mechs gathering. They must have had a dropship ground nearby, cutting off our rear. Echo Lance withdrawing eastwards towards rendezvous point. Reported Marsh. Requesting missile support on our rear side so we can pass through. The Hopman instructor's reply was near panic. Marsh felt his blood run cold even before the words registered in his head. Echo Lance, you're pushing into Port St. William. Abort and head towards the proper coordinates. Damn it, Marsh! You're going the wrong way! What? Marsh stared hard at his secondary monitor, trying to grasp symbols and abbreviations through the layers of haze and the sweat covering his eyes. Squinting, he quickly deciphered the codes pounded into his head from training. Ugh, we're moving east. Oh, frag! He realised the facing of the icon that representing the blackjack was pointing in the opposite direction. Marsh had just led his lance west to the academy's border, right into the grasping talon of the Jade Falcons. Hi everyone, Shrapnel here, and thank you for listening to my second ever reading of a Battletech book on Battletopia. First up, let me apologise, I've been under the weather this week, so my voice isn't great, uh, but I really wanted to record this story for you guys. So, my first clan story, and it's setting them up for the ultimate downfall, shall we say? Now, no clan hate here, but you did get beaten by a blackjack, so... Nah. <laughs> Seriously, I love blackjacks. Uh, one of the first ever mechs I got in the Battletech cards when I was a kid, so love them. This one was a fun one to try and do with the dynamic movements and the weapons and the stompy sounds without blowing out your ears. It's been difficult to mix it all together, but I hope you enjoyed it and you'll stay tuned for the next instalment. If you guys listening out there have any particular story about a hero, a villain, mech, event you'd like me to read, um, just hit me up in the comments. I'm always happy to add more stuff to my list because you can never have enough Battletech, can you? And as always, if you like this, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and if you'd like notifications, hit the belly thing. I'm Shrapnel, and I'll see you all for another story. Stay safe, everyone, and remember, no guts, no galaxy.